Today I want to talk about uh, USB charge cables, uh, specifically the micro USB. I'm going to try to keep this quick because I could probably go on and on all day about uh, cables and I'm sure this is going to be one of my more boring videos unless you're interested in this type of, of stuff. But regardless, what I've found out is over the past six months I've bought all kinds of, of charge cables and what I have noticed is some of my devices charge slower and some of them charge faster depending on the cable that I purchased. Uh, most of my cables are relatively new in the last six months, and so I got to thinking it's probably not a defective cable as much as a design uh, issue with the cable. Uh, probably the wires aren't big enough and they can't handle the amount of amps on today's uh, demands. So it used to be that a USB port was 500 milliamps and you know half an amp and everything kind of charged on that and as the industry changed uh, phones started demanding more and more and today some of the devices could pull 2.4 amps and more on a USB uh, style charge cable. And the some of the manufacturers, specifically the cheaper ones, have not changed their design. And today, you are you could be charging on a cable that just can't handle the charge. But let's go do a little testing here, and we'll see what we can come up with and see if we can't determine um, what's going on. What I have is a USB meter, and you can buy these on Amazon for five to ten bucks. You can buy them on eBay for five to ten bucks. And the way they work is you, you take this device and you plug it into a charge port. In this case, we're going to use a battery. This is an anchor. And the anchor has a output charge port of two amps. You plug this in here, and then there's a little screen that comes on. And the screen has a digital display, and it tells you how many volts the port is and how many amps is coming out of the port. So it tells you some other information, but we don't care about that right now. We just want to see how many amps is being pulled off this device when we plug something into it. I have a tablet here, and the tablet I specifically left on last night and drained the battery so that we could see how much current we are pulling off of each cable. And this green cable is actually one of my cheaper cables. I'm sure I bought it in the grocery store. It was not very expensive, but it's a good one. And we'll plug the cable in, and we can take a look at the screen and see how many amps we are pulling. And this cable is allowing 1.15 amps of charge to go to the tablet, which is about right because the tablet pulls a little over an amp. So it's getting its full potential of charge with this cable. Now I want to try a cheaper cable and show you what the difference is. So if we pull this out, take our cable, throw it away. This cable is made by Bitech, and Bitech makes these cables that have a red light that tells you that it's charging and a green light that tells you when it's done. I really don't know what the point of that is because most devices also tell you when they're done charging but it's kind of a neat feature and uh, I was a sucker for it and I bought one. I usually don't like cables with LEDs on them because the LEDs also take from the amps and pull a little away from charging time. Probably not much or even noticeable but it's just something I try to stay away from. It's also something that can break. I, I like to keep things simple. But anyhow, let's see what this cable does with this tablet. Let's go plug it in the charge port. See, it's green right now. It'll turn red once it starts charging. It has to sense it first. It takes a second. There we go. It's red. So now we know it's charging. And if you look at this display, 0.47 amps. That's it. Not one point. It's 0 0.47 amps. So with this cable, my tablet will take twice as long to charge. And if you didn't know any better, you would not know that there was a problem with the cable. You might suspect that there's a problem with your tablet, or you might not even notice at all. But it'll take twice as long to charge with this cable. So this tablet that would normally take an hour to charge is going to take two hours to charge with this cable. So you have to be very careful on what cables you buy, because some of them just are not as good as others. I'm going to try this other one. This one's called the Extreme Cable, and it is thirsty for power. So you know this is good. When they write thirsty for power on the side, it's got to be good, right? Kind of like it was written on the internet, so it must be true. Well, let's try it. So we'll plug it into our charge device here, right into the end of the meter. Take the other end, plug it into the port. I assure you there is no trickery here. Okay. And now let's look at the meter. Thirsty for power, 1.01 amps. Now, 
the other one was pulling a little bit more. It's not bad. It's allowing an amp to go through, and that was probably the design. See, there is no industry standard right now in these cables. And I would imagine that this particular cable was probably designed to pull one amp. But today, these new devices pull more than one amp. So it's thirsty for power probably years ago. But in today's time, or today's age, it's really not enough. One amp is, is not exactly perfect today. 2.4 is what most devices today are demanding, most newer devices, and some of them are more. So let's pull that cable out. And I have one here that's uh, a cheaper one. It's a China import from a well-known company online that imports products. It's a 10-foot cable, and that's another thing. The longer the cable, sometimes you lose a little bit of current, and this is 10-foot, so I expect some loss with it. 0.93 and I expect that because this is 10 foot the other one's only three foot I should not have a, a half an amp loss with it but again it's just a design flaw you have to be careful now I'm gonna pull one more cable out which I, I kind of chuck about because they're cheap these cables you see everywhere you see them in the grocery stores you see them in the gas stations they're usually five bucks um, I think this one actually come from a gas station as well but some of these are not bad I've had some of them that are bad uh, but these pretty decent let's take a look at it One point one seven, one point one nine. Look, it's right. It's still bouncing around in there. This cable can handle more than an amp, and this cable was only five bucks. It was from the Dollar General or a gas station, someplace cheap like that. I don't quite remember, but you see them everywhere. They are just a little ribbon cable. The biggest problem with these is they break right here. They don't really have a, a tension um, design in them to keep the cable from snapping. So if you're rough with them, they don't hold up. But for a cheap cable, they do pretty well. Anyhow, this video has went longer than I expected. I just wanted to explain to you that you need to be very careful when you're buying your charge cables. Uh, one of the clues is the packaging. Uh, if it is a high-end cable, will tell you how many amps it can handle. It'll say up to 2 amps or up to 2.4 amps. Uh, if it's a lower-end uh, Chinese import or a lower-end company, then they give you this fancy packaging and they don't tell you how many amps it can handle uh, or they tell you that it's thirsty for power and uh, you just have to be careful. Read the, read the labeling real well and uh, be careful. And if your device isn't charging, I had one, one device uh, just wouldn't charge and, and I thought, my gosh, my phone must be bad. And I went back to the house and swapped cables out and it charged just fine. It was just a faulty cable. So be very, very careful. Uh, when you buy a cable and pay attention to the packaging, don't skimp out and be cheap. Try to spend a little extra money on your cable. It will last longer and your devices will charge faster.